Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating percentiles using SPSS. SPSS has a few different ways to calculate percentiles, and which way you choose to depends on what level of detail that you want regarding the percentiles for the variable of interest. And here I'm going to show you several methods, each with advantages and disadvantages. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data editor in SPSS, I have a ID variable, an ID variable, and let's assume this is a student ID variable. And it goes from 1,001 to 1,100. So there's 100 participants. And here in the second variable named points, we have the cumulative points that these students earned let's say in a counseling program over the course of several years. And let's assume that the maximum number of points that could be earned is 1,000. So again, we're assuming that these are cumulative points. So these 1,000 points would be earned over the course of several years by taking several courses. We might choose to use a variable like this instead of say letter grades because we know that this has a higher probability of reducing ties. For example, with a letter grade system, there are going to be several students that have A's, A minuses, and B pluses, for example. But it's not likely that there'll be several students that earned exactly, for example, 885 points. So I'm going to start by using the frequencies method. So I'm going to go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Frequencies. I'm going to move points over to the Variable List box and I'm going to leave display frequency tables checked off. It's checked off by default. Under statistics, I'm going to add quartiles and click continue and then click OK. And you can see here's our output. The first table is the statistics table and you can see we have three percentiles provided and these are very common percentiles these are the quartiles. We have the 25th, 50th, and 75th percentile. And note here that the 50th percentile, the corresponding number of points, is just about 901. 901 points. The table, the frequencies table, gives us a lot more detail. It gives us the percentile for each number of points, for each record. So here the lowest number of points was 808 and the percentile is 1. As we move down the frequencies table, say to 50, to the 50th percentile, we can see the value here is 901 points, which of course is the same as what we saw in the statistics table. So using this method, you get the basic, right, the quartiles, and you get the percentile for every record in your variable. So a very detailed table. We can also use the explore function. So if I go to analyze, descriptive statistics, and then explore, I move points over to the dependent list list box. Under statistics you can see descriptives this is checked off by default. I'm going to leave it checked off. And then I'm going to add percentiles. I put a checkbox by percentiles, click continue, and here I just want to display the statistics and not the plots. I'll click OK and you can see here we have 100 cases, none are missing. The minimum, uh, which we already knew from looking at the frequencies table, 808 points, and the maximum here 971 points. And then in the percentiles table, you have the weighted average and Tukey's hinges. Now for Tukey's hinges, were provide the 25th, 50th, and 75th percentiles. For weighted average, we have the 5th, 10th, 25th, 50th, 75th, 90th, and 95th percentile. And notice again for the 50th percentile, it's 901. So this is more streamlined than the frequencies table, and it provides us key cutoff percentiles 
and depending on the application may be more useful or you may want the increased level of detail that you see in the frequencies function. But what do we do if we want the percentiles to display in the data editor? Right? So, so far I've shown you methods that produce percentiles in the statistics viewer. So if I move back to the data editor, there are a few things I need to do to calculate the percentiles for this variable points. Uh, first, I'm going to sort the points ascending. So we're going to have the 808 at the top and the 971 at the bottom. And then I'm going to go to transform, rank cases, and move points over to the variable list box. I want to assign rank 1 to the smallest value, so I'm going to leave that set to the default setting. Under rank types, rank is all I want, that's default. And for ties, the rank assigned to ties will be the mean. I'll click continue and then OK and move back to the data editor. And you can see it's created this new variable named R points. So the rank of all the points. And then I'm going to move back to transform and go to compute variable. And this will be the percentile. So for target variable, I'm going to type in percentile. And then it's asking for a numeric expression. The formula to calculate the percentiles is going to be 100 times the expression, the rank minus 0.5 divided by the sample size. So in numeric expression, I'll start with 100, then asterisk for times, and I'll put two parentheses. I'm going to move the R points variable over, subtract 0.5, close one of the sets of parentheses, then divide by the sample size, in this case is 100, and then close the second set of parentheses. So 100 times R points minus 0.5 divided by n, divided by 100 in this case. And then I'll click OK and move back to the data editor. And you can see in this new variable percentile that it displays two digits to the right of the decimal. If I go to variable view and percentile and decimals, I can just move that to zero. Move back to the data view and now we have the percentiles without any digits to the right of the decimal. And again, if we move down to the 50th percentile, we can see the value is 901, just as we would expect from what we saw in the statistics viewer using the other methods. I hope you found this video on calculating percentiles to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.